Hi, this screencast is going to walk through importing web form submissions. My name is Jake Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I build and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. Why is importing submissions important? Well, if you can export submissions, shouldn't you also be able to import submissions? And it's, it's easy to build any type of form using the web form module. It should be just as easy to import any type of data. And I think it's just important to make it easy for people to come into Drupal, to pull their forms. They can just build them from scratch and copy that data into that form. So let's walk into how do you export and import submissions? Well, you need to enable the module. It's called the Submission Export Import Module. It's included. And once you have it installed, you can generate a test CSV, a specific format. It's very clean CSV versus the other formats where you can export, which have you can do CSV export, but there's a lot more control and fine grain proper options, this is a simple CSV and I'll show it to you. Or you can view an example and then you can edit that CSV in Excel or Google Sheets or generate it from another system and then you import that CSV using the results import tab. And this is a CSV just to get everyone on the same page. It's a simple text file with comma separated values. And some notes about importing data from a CSV. UUIDs are strongly recommended. It makes it possible to update, easily update existing records. File uploads must use a publicly accessible URL. So if you want to include a file in a field, you just have to make sure that URL that you insert in the CSV is publicly available. And for multiple values, we're going to do them in one column, comma delimited. But if there's nested commas, you need to URI escape them, which is percent two %2e. Very unlikely that most multi-value elements are going to have commas, but we need to cover that use case. And then for the most complex element, which is a multiple composite value element, we're using inline YAML because it's a very, it's a nested array with multiple values. And you can see a demo of that in a second. And this is where you can upload web form submissions as the form. You have the option of doing a file upload or even entering a remote URL. Very useful for Google Sheets, which will let you publish your CSVs on the web, is, and then you can just call them directly. The upload settings, once you upload that CSV, you can map your source columns to your destination submission. Generally, your CSV headers should contain the mapping. You can skip form validation. The import is much faster, but assumes you have valid data. Um, that means when each record, it, it bootstraps, it creates a form, passes your data into the form and validates it. If you have custom logic, this is the best way to trigger that custom validation logic. And finally, you could treat all warnings as errors. So, you know, for example, with the um, file uploads, those URLs are parsed. It goes and checks that the file exists. And if it doesn't, it throws a warning, but will still execute the import because it doesn't mean you can't import the data. There's nothing invalid. It just means it'll be ignored. So this is a little warning. If you really want clean data, you should check it off. So it makes sure that every record is 100% parsed the way you would expect. Or you could review those warnings and keep updating your spreadsheet until you can get rid of the warnings. And, you know, this is the import settings and options where you get to do some mapping, and there's two checkboxes below. It just gives you a little confirmation how many records are being imported. I'm going to do a demo. So we're starting off here where this is my test form that I've used to build this feature. And s simply put, it's just a kitchen sink of all the elements that we wa might want to import at, a diff at different times. So there's email, multiple email, there's checkboxes, there's file uploads, multiple, and I'm just checking multiple files, how that's working. Likerts, because those are kind of complex composites. Composite element, entity references. Now, to, to review this, what you can do is go to the test tab, and there's this link up here, if you have the Devel Generate module on. I'm going to just generate, let's do 10 submissions. I'll go to the results tab and we can see it there. We have our dummy submissions. Now I'll go to download. And this is just to help get you started. There's now a CSV download option. And when you switch to it, it's very, very basic. It just is use UUIDs for all entity references. You need to do this if you're transferring data from one server to another and you want to maintain your entity references. You can uncheck this. It's fine. It'll just show us ID. it'll just show us the IDs for all entity references and download. And for this purpose, I wanted to show you the data on screen. I'm going to hit here. And it just generates a CSV. 
which gives you kind of a starting point. And what we can do here is this is the CSV opened in Google Sheets. You kind of get an idea of the data, UUID, notes, emails. This is multiple emails, so there's a comma separating them. Keep going. These are, I'm using the URIs from Git for this example. And finally, this is the only one that you just got to be careful with. This is a composite, a multiple composite element, so it's YAML. Otherwise, if it's a single composite, it just gets broken into two columns with double underscores breaking down each sub-element. So for example, this is a link composite, and there's a title and a URL. I'm going to go back, and we're going to go up here, and when you've enabled the module, you'll get an upload tab. If you can download, you should be able to upload. Import-export is kind of synonymous with, you know, download-upload. Go to Upload. It says, OK, here's a warning. This is a new feature. Please test this on a development environment. These are all the notes. Some more details about what I've just said. Gives you how long it's going to take, an example of inline YAML. There's also a view and download example submission CSV. So if I click here, we're going to get a similar thing. This is not data stored in your database. This is just randomly generated data that you can just look at, open to Excel, and edit. I'm going to scroll down. This is a test form, so I am pre-populating it with this URL, which is this the this is the local version of that Google Sheet. You can also do a file upload, but for now I'm going to hit continue. Pulls the data. It gives us a little more information. If you don't have a UUID, let's show you a warning. You can control the mapping here. I generally recommend you do the mapping in your CSV, which is make these column names match what's expected. But if you have total you don't have control over the CSV you might need to do some mapping to pull in the data. Then this is the skip and treat all errors as warnings. I do require you to confirm it. I'm going to hit import. We're not going to do those settings right now, but you'll see it's going to go through. It's very quick. It gives us this report at the top. These are warnings. Now, in that example spreadsheet on Google Sheets that I had, I, this, I'm testing some concepts here, and this is an invalid path because it doesn't have HTTP. We don't want to let people pull files from local servers. It has to begin with HTTP, HTTPS, and be publicly available so that it's secure. And then it's also validating the YAML. And then this is, these errors are validation errors on the third row of that CSV where the email address is simply not valid. And on the CSV, one of the options element has an illegal choice. It's not a valid option. And this just gives you an example. And if you were to uncheck, if you were to check those two boxes, skip validation and skip the warnings, you won't get any errors or the data will go straight in. Um, that's pretty much it. You could see the records have been brought in. And if you, uh, well, by the way, the mistake here, well, no, it said create total three, created two. Two new records from the spreadsheet. By the way, this is merging the new records that I brought in and the existing 10 records that I had. And you know you can monitor and watch as the data comes in and out. Um, this is that notes field. I think it says what type of record it is. Ta-da. OK, we're going to keep going. So importing data is super easy and simple in the web form module for Drupal 8 now. And as a bonus, you can also import submissions using the Drush web form import command which supports those two options, skip validation, treat warnings as errors, um, and you can also do your mappings. So what are some other ways to import data into web forms? I think it's important that this is a specific feature that is meant to make it really easy for people to import data into web forms. But there are other options in the Drupal community. Uh, the two that come to mind is the Migrate module, which will migrate more than just submissions. It migrates your forms. Or you can use the Migrate Source CSV module, which will allow you to take similar process, CSV data, and migrate it into web forms. The, this is a question of you know, simplicity versus flexibility. The approach here with the web form module is make it as simple as possible for people to bring in data. Migrate module is as flexible as possible because you can massage that data as it's going in. We're not allowing that. We're assuming you'll massage the data, meaning manipulate it, in the CSV. In Google Sheets, you'll do your replaces and clean up. Um, finally, there's the feeds module, which also supports similar functionality, but it needs some work to bring 
be able to support web form data and I've included the issue number 2982715 here if someone wants to work on that that's another approach to bringing data in so thank you to learn more about me go to jrockwoods.com take care